Hey, Internet, this is Jacob Clifford. Now, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, what is the longest roller coaster marathon? Take a guess. I don't know. Do you think it's maybe six hours? Is it 12 hours, 24 hours? Like, how long can someone ride a roller coaster over and over and over again? You ready for this? It is 405 hours and 40 minutes. That's over 16 days on a roller coaster. That's insane. But I need to point out for every hour, the guy had a five minute break and he could bank him. So if he rode the roller coaster for three hours, he'd have 15 minutes to go to the bathroom and do other things. But still, that is a lot of roller coaster riding. And the thing that makes it so weird is that we all inherently understand the idea of the law of diminishing margin utility, right? We all get less and less satisfaction. So the first time you ride a roller coaster, it's awesome, it feels good, you enjoy it. Second time, maybe not so much. Third, fourth, fifth time, you eventually get less and less additional satisfaction. That's what we're talking about in this video. I'm gonna talk about margin utility and how to maximize your total utility. Let's stick with the amusement park and roller coaster riding theme as we talk about consumer choice. Recently, I went to Disneyland with my my eight-year-old daughter Avery and it was awesome but I can't help but thinking about how you're using economics even when you're riding roller coasters. You're using economics all the time. For example, when you're walking around Disneyland, you have to decide which ride you want to choose. And you just don't do that arbitrarily. You're actually thinking about it. You're doing calculations in the back of your brain. You're thinking about, okay, what's the satisfaction I'm going to get from any given ride divided by the price? But right now you might be thinking, no, there is no price for riding the rides at Disneyland. Once you pay to get in, you don't have to pay again. All the rides are free. No, they're not free. There is a price. And I am currently paying it right now. The price to pay is the line. That's right. So what you do is you calculate the additional satisfaction you're going to get from any given ride and then you divide that by how long you have to wait in line for that satisfaction and then you compare that to other different rides. So that's the reason why you don't ride like Space Mountain over and over and over again or you don't ride Thunder Mountain like we're about to do over and over and over again. You kind of change it up. By the way, that video was part of another video I made about the economics of Disneyland. Check it out. It's actually really good. But let's stick to consumer choice. The concepts I'm about to show you and the skills that you need to practice, you need for a microeconomics class. But if you're not in micro and you're in macro or you're not even taking an econ class, you should still understand how economists assume people make decisions. And the first thing economists do is they simplify the world. So let's assume you're in an amusement park and there's only two rides that you can ride. We've got Big Thunder Mountain and you can ride the Astro Orb or the rockets ride at Disneyland. Right here I have the total utility you get from riding the roller coaster. So the first time you ride it, you get a total of 120 utils. When you ride it two times, you get a total of 200 utils. Now a util is just like a satisfaction point. It's just a number saying how much happiness and joy did riding that roller coaster give you. Utils depend entirely on the individual. So you might get a seven and I might get a 10 or some other person might get a 200. It all depends on that person, how many times they've ridden that ride and other factors. Like for example, I get more more utils when I'm riding with my daughter. It's fun, I get to see her laughing and enjoying it, so that increases my utils. So utils represents your satisfaction points, which is completely arbitrary, but you can quantify it. I can put a number on my satisfaction, it's called a util. This is worth at least 50 utils. Now again, this is the total utility. You have to be able to calculate the margin utility, the additional utility you get from each time you ride the roller coaster. So go ahead and calculate that. Stop the video and start it back up again. It's really important you actually write these down. Don't just do them in your head because I'm gonna ask you some questions based on this data in a few minutes, okay? So write it down. In this case, you're calculating marginal utility, but you're gonna be doing this calculation a lot with marginal costs and marginal revenue and marginal resource costs, marginal social benefit. You're gonna be calculating this idea of marginal. So make sure you understand, marginal is the change in the total. So for the very first time you ride the roller coaster, you went from no utility, because you didn't ride it, to 120. So the marginal is 120, but when you ride it a second time, your total utility goes up to 200, so your margin utility is 80, right? The change between 120 and 200. And you just keep doing that over and over again, so it's 40, 32, 16, and four. Again, this is the additional satisfaction you get from riding this roller coaster six different times, over and over and over again, up to six times. So let's do the same thing with the other ride, the Rockets ride. So right here you have the total utility, the first, second, third, and fourth, fifth time you ride the Rocket ride, calculate the margin utility. So the first one gives you 30 additional satisfaction, then 20, then 16, eight, four, and two. So now we can calculate margin utility. And you can actually 
actually use this to make decisions. So if I'm trying to decide which one I want to ride, well, obviously I do the roller coaster first because it gives me more margin utility. 120 is more than 30. In fact, if you look at this data, I would continue riding that roller coaster four times before I'd even think about switching over to the Rockets ride. But that's assuming that the price or the cost of riding these two rides is exactly identical. And it's not, right? The roller coaster always has a longer line. And since you have to factor that in, that's going to affect your decision making. In fact, that's one of the reasons why at amusement parks they post how long the wait is because it helps you make that decision, right? If you had no idea how long the wait was, then you couldn't really make good decisions. But they post it so you go, okay, how much satisfaction am I going to get for that roller coaster and how long do I have to wait in line? By the way, since we're talking about world records, take a guess on how long someone had to wait in line for a Disney ride. So what's the longest any individual had to wait in a line for just one ride? You let me know in the comments below and then take a look at the description and I have the answer for you. So take a look. That is the longest anybody has ever had to wait. In this case, in fact, let's get rid of time and let's go throw in some dollars. So let's just say, and I know it's not realistic, but let's just say that riding the roller coaster costs $4 for each time you ride it and the Rockets ride costs you $2. And to help us to make a decision and use this concept, let's give you an income constraint of $16. So I have two questions for you here. First one, if you only have $16, what combination of the Rocket ride and the roller coaster ride will maximize utility? How many times should you ride each ride with your $16? And last, what is the total utility you're going to get from maximizing it? In other words, what's the total amount of utility you could possibly get from $16? Now, there are several different strategies you can use to figure this out. First, you could list out all the possible combinations. So right here, you can ride the roller coaster one time and the Rocket six times, the roller coaster twice, and the Rocket's four or three and two or four and zero. Those are all the possible ways you can use this $16. Instead of adding up the total utility for each one of these combinations, you can do something else. And that's how economists assume that you actually think. You calculate margin utility per dollar. It's the margin utility you get from good X divided by the price of good X. So let's go back to the numbers you already calculated and now add in the margin utility per dollar for each one of these. So do these calculations, stop the video, and start it back up again. Good luck. The reason why it's valuable is because we can use it now to figure out what you want to do. Again, stop the video. Good luck. So the first thing you want to do in this situation to get the most utility per dollar by riding the roller coaster. 30 is the highest you can get. So you ride the roller coaster first. Done. I've spent $4. Now I still have more money, so I'm also going to ride the roller coaster a second time because 20 is the highest utility per dollar I can get uh, at this situation. So now I've spent $8. So next, I'm going to go ahead and switch over now to the Rockets because 15 is the highest utility per dollar spent I get over here. So now I've spent $4, $8, $10. I still have money left over. I'm going to go ahead and ride the third time and the second time. So third time on the roller coaster and the second time on the rockets. And there's your right answer. The right answer here, the right combination that will maximize your total utility is three times on the roller coaster and twice on the rockets. And that's the skill you need to be able to do over and over again with different numbers and different scenarios. Just calculate the margin utility, calculate the margin utility per dollar, and then compare them until you run out of money. But we're not done. Let's go ahead and answer the second question. How much is the total? utility you're going to get at this correct combination. Again, stop the video, do the calculation, see if you're right by starting the video back up. Good luck. The answer is 538. No, just joking, just joking. The answer is 290 utils, right? So you get 120 from the very first time you ride the roller coaster and an additional 80 when you ride it the second time, an additional 40 from the third time. So that shows you how much total utility you get from riding the roller coaster. You get another 30 from the rockets, another 20 from the second time on the rockets for another 50 of the rockets. You add them all together, you get 290 total satisfaction points. I actually did the math for you you, so you don't have to go back and do this over again. But to prove the concept, I went back and looked at the different combinations you could do, and you find out that that is the highest total utility, right? Now, your economics textbook or your professor or teacher will most likely show you this equation. It's the utility maximizing rule, which looks complicated, but it's not. It's literally what we just did. You look at the margin utility per dollar of two different things you're going to do, good X and good Y. And basically, if the margin utility per dollar is higher for one of them, you keep doing it. And because of the law of diminishing margin utility, eventually that number is going to start going down. And then when it goes down to Y, and Y is higher, and you get more margin utility per dollar from doing and consuming good Y, then you do that instead. And you keep doing that over and over again until they equal each other. But the biggest mistake students make when it comes to learning this is they don't practice enough. So right now, it is time to practice. If you think, oh, I got it, it's easy. 
Sure, prove it. Prove that you get it right now. In the description below, I posted a practice fear response and the answers to that fear response. So right now, get in there, try the practice fear response, see if you get it, do the calculations, and let me know in the comments below what you got as a score on the practice fear response, right? It's out of seven points, so let me know how you did. Of course, let me know if this video helped you and other things you want me to help you understand, okay? Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel. Until next time.